Hello everyone and welcome to this random test I wanted to do today. Um, it's I kind of wanted to make a game or at least try to make the start of a game or like test testing out a game and um, so this game your character plays as a series of security cameras um, not qu quite unlike Five Nights at Freddy's but it's not a horror game um, so I wanted to figure out the camera systems today so there'll be a little bit of scripting and some modeling and yeah so I just have a basic project set up already um, where I downloaded the Unity UI uh, thing so I could make buttons and stuff that look decent. Um, and that's it. So I think the first thing we want to do is actually make a scene. And so let's hop over to Blender and start that. Okay, so the scene I want to make is kind of like maybe a room with a couple hallways coming off of it you know I don't really know quite yet so I don't know we'll just play with it um let's see let's actually change shading with back face culling turn that on maybe some ambient occlusion but only a little bit not not very much um just so that when we go over here to shading and UVs and flip the direction, we can see inside like it's a room. Kind of cool. Um, and we can delete the camera because this is just a model. So let's see here. <clears throat> the room probably shouldn't be two, one, two units tall. Um, it could be five maybe. So sorry for that. Um, if you hear the blinging. Five units tall. A unit, I guess, is in Blender here, is about a person tall. So maybe maybe I'm overestimating this. This is like two people tall. That's that's actually a pretty good sized room. One unit. So I'm gonna make everything kind of grid like because um you know it's easier that way. Um so I'm going to Shift Z, there we go. I'm gonna make this three times as big, maybe. That's kind of a big room. But I don't know. Looking pretty good to me. That's eh, still kind of a big room, okay. But we want a big room, I think. I think we really do want a big room. Okay, now I'm gonna actually separate this into its layers, basically. So I'm gonna put five there. Five here, I think five is the right number anyway, um, and then one here, so that this is a whole big grid. Um, and let's take. Uh, let's actually, let's extrude the ceiling one more. No, not the whole entire ceiling. Um, Do we want only want part of the ceiling? I think I do only want part of the ceiling. So let's actually select like a four by four thing here. Ah, maybe that back face culling thing was a bad idea. Here, I don't know. Um, and then let's. Uh, is that four by four? Yeah, that's four by four. Okay. Or actually, no, let's do 4x6. I'm going to select the whole ceiling right here. There we go. Then we can extrude that up one more. So that's minus one more, but it's one taller. So if we're inside the room, it'll look like this. Sort of like this. Um, and the inclusion distance 0.1 strength. Five, no, <laughs> just one point two something. So we get the corners and stuff. Get an idea of the shape. Okay, and then I think I want a hallway coming off, coming into this room from 
here, I think. And a doorway is going to be like, well, I don't know. So I'm going to extrude a hallway like that. I'm just going to go three and add three there or add two there. So that's a hallway coming into the big room. This is actually a rather open area. I want it to be open. And I do think I want... Um, if we subdivide this okay. there, that's kind of like quarters, maybe. Um, I want to, ooh, this is a hard one. I think I want to make this like a separate hallway. So, I'm going to extrude this down. And this will be kind of a messy model. We don't have to make it perfect. And then I want to bridge these. Let's see, bridge edge loops. Hey, look at that. That's kind of cool. Um, and bridge these here. Bridge edge loops. And I'm just going to leave that like a complete mess there. And, you know. Just kind of go crazy with this. Something like that. I don't know. That's really terrible, but... Yeah, because I should really... Before bridging those... Before bridging these ones, I really should... Uh, extrude these up to where I want them. Wait, what am I doing? No... Do I do it? Do I want to do that? I'm wondering if I should just make a doorway here or something like that. Just like the walls and uh, do that. Well, did not mean to do that. So that there's. There's just a wall right there. And this doesn't have to exist. X faces. Ta da! And we could put a subdivision right here. And select everything and say uh, remove doubles. And we should get two vertices right there removed. Um, okay. Anyway, that took longer than I wanted, but, you know, a hallway thing like that. I, I think I'll speed the rest of this up, and you guys can probably, you know, get the base, the rest of the basics um, just by the, the footage. So here I'm going to add a bevel modifier just to keep all the edges not perfectly square. It, it helps it uh, in the end. And of course naming is important. Naming and saving. And then I'll get started on the furniture or, you know, uh, decorations to populate the, the world slash room. I'm being sure to keep the pivot points on the bottoms of all the objects because it it makes it much simpler if I wanted to move them around later in Unity, perhaps. So it was my original idea to have the main uh, perspective camera be sort of a, a web camera. And so I'm designing the computer first because that's what... Um, that's what I was initially thinking of where I'm going to put the, the first camera is on top of this computer. 
And I'm making everything really, really low poly because I, this is just basically a test to, you know, get the concept, the idea out and, you know, figure out how I might be able to do this with better things or, you know, better models and such. I'm being sure to make um, separate materials for everything as I'm going. And what you just saw me do there, I am duplicating the object, but not the mesh data. So you can do that with Alt uh, D, I think, in Blender. If you, instead of Shift D to duplicate, you do Alt D. I actually do that a lot with a lot of the props or the decorations, uh, set decorations is I actually duplicate them without duplicating them and you know without duplicating the mesh um, data it just makes the blender project cleaner and um, naming all of the mesh data uh, the same name or with a you know slight difference of name like mesh underscore mesh like I'm doing that just makes it so you don't have any duplicates uh, or duplicated mesh data floating around that is just named cube dot zero you know eleven or something it it feels cleaner to me which I like so I was having a hard time coming up with decorations but I thought maybe a picture a couple picture frames going around and here I'm uh, UV unwrapping the the faces of the screen and the pictures so that I can put textures on them in Unity. A note on the shared mesh data is that location, rotation, and scale are all object specific, so you can scale and rotate and position wherever you want without worry of that. Let's model the camera next. So I started off with a, 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 a sort of a basic idea of what a security camera looked like, but I didn't look at any reference footage before I started, or reference pictures, so I kind of messed up. Um, and I, I did say security camera because that's what I was going for. Um, even though um, I do want the main camera to be a webcam. I'm just going to use uh, the security camera model. So as a kind of a reminder that I need to look at reference images, I, I didn't like the body I came up with. So this is one of the ones that I tried out and it felt too too clunky. So I ended up going an uh, even different route. Third time's the charm, I guess. I thought maybe I should make a uh, three-axis gimbal system here, but I really wanted to make it simple because this is just a temporary model, kind of. And I decided here that I didn't like the cube look, and I wanted it to be round. So. This is actually getting pretty close to the final design that I settled on. And it's not that good, but, you know, as I said, it's it's temporary. I really like the hood uh, look, the hooded look that I saw in some of the reference pictures I looked up after I had started. So I added one of those. playing around with modifiers and bevels and uh, things like that and just the finishing touches because I, I was pretty happy with the design. Here I decided to uh, bevel the lens a little bit so that if I decided to add a reflective material in Unity it would uh, look like a lens, you know. Names are important. So the simplest way to get your models into Unity is just by saving them to the actual, let me see if I can show you here, to the actual asset folder. So here's the project, here's the asset folder, and I made another folder called models just to keep it clean and I already have it saved here, but just saving it straight into the assets folder is how you import them into Unity. And look, there they are, there's my room and my camera. So now we can get started setting up the room. Oop. There it is. Let's 
Scale factor, let's do this at 2, I think. I made it a little too small. Optimize mesh, mesh compression, medium, generate colliders, sure. Import blend shapes, no. Swap UVs, generate light maps. Oh, I think I actually do need to go in and do the UV stuff for this. Well, maybe not. Uh, import, that's good. From models material, model name, model material. Yeah, let's do that and hit apply. And let's go to the room and just select everything and uh, smart UV project. Just to get, you know, UVs on the walls if I want it. Um, and maybe do it to the rugs too. Okay, save that, hide it, and Unity will think a little bit. There we go, there's the scale factor kicked in, it got way more zoomed in. Um, let's set the rig here to none. Just apply that, and go over to animations and import animation, apply. And we're done. There is a lot of these beveled, beveled things hmm I might I'll go in and fix that off camera here